In the last video, we looked at setting up Server 2012 on VMware ESXi 5.1. Today, we're going to be looking at taking the virtual machine that we cloned and installing SharePoint 2013. The first thing we're going to do is create a snapshot of our virtual machine. I'm going to call the snapshot simply today's date. The snapshot will take a moment to complete. After it's completed, we're going to go ahead and power on our virtual machine and open the console. In this video, we're going to demonstrate installing SharePoint 2013 Foundation. And a couple videos in a few days, we're going to be doing SharePoint Enterprise 2013. And the principle is basically the same. The biggest difference you're going to notice is the SQL Server installation and also the addition of clustering in the Enterprise version. So we're going to go ahead and sign into our virtual machine. And using the link you see on the screen, we're going to download SharePoint Foundation 2013. If you have the website pulled up in your local browser, you can copy the URL and paste it into the virtual machine if you have VMware tools installed. And we're going to save this downloader onto the desktop. Okay, and this is also a pretty large download, 800, over 800 megabytes, so depending on your connection speed, it might take a minute. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and run the installer when it downloads here, but keep in mind we're going to be prompted for some prerequisites, and those are the .NET Framework 4.5, the Windows Management Framework 3.0, Application Server Role, Web Server IIS Role, the Microsoft SQL Server 2008 R2 Service Pack 1 Native Client, Windows Identity Foundation, Microsoft Sync Framework Runtime version 1.0 Service Pack 1 64-bit, Windows Server App Fabric, Microsoft Identity Extensions, Microsoft Information Protection and Control Client, Microsoft WCF Data Services 5.0, and Cumulative Update Package 1 for Microsoft App Fabric 1.1 for Windows Server. Okay, our download is complete, so we're going to go ahead and click Run. It's going to take just a moment to extract the files. Okay, and the first thing we're going to do is install the software prerequisites. Okay, and here's the software that I mentioned earlier that will be installed. Okay, while the web server is installing, let's go ahead and review the hardware and software requirements here real quick. For a single server instance, and that's going to be a single server with a built-in database or single server that uses SQL Server, development or evaluation installation of SharePoint Server 2013 or SharePoint Foundation 2013 with the minimum recommended services for development environments. So we need at least 8 gig of RAM, a 64-bit processor with 4 cores, and 80 gig for the system drive. This would not be used in a production environment, but as we're demonstrating here today, this is going to be in a 
testing environment or just a trial. If you wanted to use a single server with built-in database in a production environment, you'd want at least 10 gigabytes of RAM, four cores of processor, and 80 gig for a system drive. The more memory you can give SharePoint, the better. As with any Microsoft product uh, that uses SQL Server, the more memory is always better in terms of performance. It will eat up all the memory you give it. All right, so this is still running here. I'm going to pause it for just a minute. Ideally, in setting up a production SharePoint farm, you'd want at least two web front ends and two database servers that are clustered. And the only way you can get clustering in SQL is to use the Enterprise Edition, which is usually best to license it by processor in terms of capacity instead of the other licensing model. If you have two web front ends, that way you have one if one of them fails, or you also have load balancing and you can have support more concurrent connections. In the SharePoint 2013 release we're using SQL Server 2008 R2 Express and currently there's a few limitations with that. Used to the SQL database limit was 4 gigabytes and Microsoft has changed it to 10 gigabytes. There's still a 1 CPU and 1 gigabyte of RAM limit so you are going to notice some performance hits if you're using the SQL Server Express version. Let's go ahead and look at the performance uh, during the install here. All right, and it looks like the installation just finished. I'm going to go ahead and click finish here and the system is going to restart. So after the virtual machine is restarted, we're going to go ahead and log back in. And the installer should automatically launch back up and proceed with the rest of the prereqs. Alright, so the system is going to restart after finishing the prereqs.
Alright, so as we can tell, all required prereqs have been installed or enabled. We're going to go ahead and click Finish. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and launch the installer from the desktop. Okay, and since we've already installed the prereqs, we're going to go ahead and install SharePoint Foundation. Click I accept on the terms of this agreement, then next. Okay, and here's a couple of different options we have. Select the type of installation you want to install on the server. For this one, we're just going to be choosing standalone, used for trial or developmental and de development environments, and installs all components on a single server. This installation cannot add servers to create a SharePoint farm. It includes SQL Server 2008 R2 Express Edition with Service Pack 1 in English. If you notice, the other option requires SQL Server 2008 R2 Service Pack 1. So that would be another product you would have to buy and license from Microsoft. We can choose data location. We wouldn't need this for a single instance. Let's go ahead and click install. Alright, so after the installation is finished, we're going to be prompted to complete the configuration of your server. We must run the SharePoint products configuration wizard. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And it's okay to go ahead and close out of the blue SharePoint foundation box. We're going to click next on configure products. Choose yes to restart the services automatically. Okay, so right now the installer is configuring the SQL databases.
You might see a configuration failed error like this one. Uh, we don't need to worry about this though. We can go ahead and click finish and if we open up a browser we're going to browse to localhost and we're going to be prompted for credentials. We're going to log in here using our local administrator account. It's going to take it a couple of minutes here to load the page for the first time as it has to process all the IIS worker procedures. Alright, so you can see we're at the home page. And we can go ahead and turn on intranet settings. Alright, so we've successfully installed SharePoint 2013 on server 2012. In our next video, we're going to be setting up blob stores. And thanks for watching. For more videos, visit our website at learnlearn.etssc.com. Thanks for watching.